Hi there, welcome back. Uh, we're doing part three of chemical bonding. And in this section, what we're going to do is now that we can draw Lewis structures, we're going to look at resonance structures. So we're trying to draw the best Lewis structure um, for compounds. And sometimes there is more than one way we could draw it. And so in that case, it's called a resonance structure, okay, where there's two or more valid Lewis structures that could be drawn for that same compound. Sometimes it's one or the other that's best. Sometimes it's just a combination of the two. And one way we can look at that is by using something called formal charge. So resonance, and then we got formal charge. And formal charge is a is a system of numbers where we can assign particular numbers to a um, each individual element in a compound. And by looking at how those numbers come out in the accounting, we can tell which of those structures would actually be the best Lewis structure. So in resonance, what happens is that the electrons localize between the atoms. They're not really, like we used to talk about it like they were flipping back and forth, okay? But now really what we found is it's not so much that it's resonating between two forms, even though that's how we draw it, but it's because it's, it's more like I have a double bond on one side and I have a single bond on the other. And it becomes like two bonds that are like 1.5, if that makes sense. So it's, it's like a hybrid of the double bond and the single bond between both sides. And so that's why it's still not polar when we get when we end up. So a resonance hybrid is sort of like if you're if you're breeding, you know, one of these fancy dogs now that they're doing, you know, everything, and you put and you breed two breeds together, and you get a hybrid of the two, and you're trying to get the best aspects of both. Um, in chemistry, this is ozone we're using as an example. Um, we take the double bond on one side, the double bond on the other. Remember, these are in three dimensions. And then we get like a hybrid of those two bonds that are between both of the oxygen bonds. And so it's, it's not resonating back and forth like we used to say, but it's really a um, intermediate type of structure that's formed. So you can tell how many resonance structures there could be for these. They're all going to have oxygen uh, by looking at how many oxygens they have. So in the case of NO3, I can tell since it's NO3, it's going to have three structures. Okay, and so N, nitrogen is the least electronegative, so I know that it's going to go in the middle. And so I'm going to draw the, draw the skeletons for each one of these. It doesn't matter if you do that uh, that third oxygen on the top or the bottom. It's it's your preference. I usually just do them on the top first. Okay, so I've got them written, and I'm going to do the NASB um, because I'm, I'll use those same numbers for all of them. So they need let's see one, two, three, four. So four times eight, sixteen, twenty-four, thirty-two, and available I have five from the nitrogen and I have 6, 12, 18 from the oxygens. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, which gives me 23. And that's an odd number. Can't have an odd number, but remember it's got a charge on it. So I'm going to put those. <laughs> I am so sorry. I hope I didn't blow your eardrums out with that. <laughs> All right. And then when we put these little two-way arrows when we're doing uh, resonance structures, and I'm putting it in parentheses because it is an, an ion, okay? All right. So it's tw it says 23. I notice it's a negative one charge, so that's going to have one more electron. So that's 24. 
So then 32 minus 24 is 8. And so the bond prediction is 4. So I've got 3 showing right now. Then I ask myself, can it form double bonds? P-C-O-N-S. Yes, it can because it's nitrogen and oxygen. Both of them have to be listed. So I'm going to have double bonds. And that's kind of where these resonance structures come from. So I could put the double bond there. I could put it there. Or I could put it there. That's why I have three resonance structures. And then I go back to my 24. And I have 2, 4, 6, 8 in bonds. Okay, which gives me 16. And then I'm going to fill the octets. So this one needs 4 because it's sharing a double bond. This one needs 6. And this one needs 6. And so that's 16 equals 0. So I can go ahead and do that for these. And again, you can put them wherever you want to. They're in three dimensions. This is just us accounting for everything. And notice that I've run out of electrons, so I don't have any more electrons to put on the nitrogen. But that's OK, uh, because nitrogen actually has four bonds, including that double bond in each one of those. OK? So those are the resonance structures for nitrate, NO3 minus. So resonance structures, in order to be resonance structures, have to have the same connectivity. That is, they have to be this connected the same way. But the electrons can be in different places. They also have to have the same number of electrons. Um, so if they meet that criteria and we can't tell which one is the best structure, then we use what we call formal charge. And formal charge um, is going to be um, the same total in each one of them. But the better structure is going to have fewer formal charges, that is, you know, numbers, integers. Um, the best structures will have smaller formal charges. That is, a plus 2 is better is worse than a plus 1. And the, they will have negative. If, if all of those are the same still, then you go and look at the negative formal charge should be on the more electronegative atom. OK, so um, fewer. So if it's got some zeros, that's good. Um, if it if it has integers, the smaller number integers is best. And then if both of those are the same, then you look and see if where the negative formal charge would be, because some of them are going to be negative and some of them are going to be positive. And that is the end of the resonance structure discussion.